if we need to be beyond the default configuration in our OFPF network, then we need to fully understand the OFPF network types. I have divided the network types in three different videos. In this video, I will go on over the broadcast network type, how the designated and backup designated router are going to help to establish those neighbor adjacencies. Network types. Why do we need to learn about OSPF network types? First of all, network types are going to influence the way how OSPF is going to form neighbor adjacencies. Additionally, there are some roles that we can ignore and also that is going to affect how the link state advertisement or LSAs will be generated. By default, if we are just creating interface template, the network type that is going to be used is called broadcast. In general, we can see network types in two big categories. The first one is dynamic neighbors and the second one is static neighbors. Dynamic neighbor means that we are going to use a particular network type and all the neighbor will be discovered dynamically. The second category is about static neighbors. So in that case, we are going to create manually an entry per neighbor. This is common in networks that are not supporting multicast. In those cases, we need to add manually every neighbor that we are expecting out of any particular interface. I have a topology where we are going to play with every network type available in router OS 7. Let's start with broadcast. Broadcast is the most common network type. Is the default value just by adding an interface template automatically. That is going to be broadcast. When broadcast is recommended, if we have more than one neighbor connected out of the same interface. Let's check the topology that we'll be working on today. So we have here on the left, arg1 connected to that switch. And then out of that switch, we have R2, R3, and R4. So we can see that all of them are in the network 10.0.0.0 slash 24. If we see that topology from the perspective of R1, we can see that R1 is expecting three neighbors out of the interface Ether1. So in this case, broadcast is recommended. The same is going to happen to R2, R3, and R4. In one of the previous videos in the channel, we talk about link state advertisement, different type of messages that these devices are sending to exchange routing information. In summary, every router is going to create an LSA type 1 that basically is including information about all the connected networks, the local OFPF data. And that information is going to be exchanged with uh, the neighbors. But just in mind having R4 sending that information to R1, then to R3, and to R2, that is going to generate a lot of traffic. If we have more than four routers, let's assume that we have 10 routers. So basically every router is going to be sending LSA type 1 to all the remaining routers. So that is completely inefficient. So to avoid that, OSPF uses a concept that is called designated router and backup designated router. But what exactly is a designated and a backup designated router? Let's jump to the topology to understand how this is going to work. So in this case, we have this section here that is going to be using the broadcast network type. Just after enabling the OSPF process, in those devices, all the interfaces connected to that broadcast network type are going to elect a designated router. And that is going to be based on a router priority. So we'll see how we'll configure that in my router OS in a few seconds. Let's assume that after that election process, ARG1 has been elected as the designated router. 
And let's assume that R2 has been elected as the backup designated router. So that basically means that now all those devices, R4, R3, R2, they are going to generate the LSA type 1 and they will send that information to the DR and also they are going to send that information to the BDR. If we have 10 routers in that broadcast network, every router is going to send the LSA type 1 to the DR and BDR only. So you can see that we are reducing the amount of traffic. So we don't need to have a full mesh between all those devices. So we have the DR, we have the BDR, and then we can have any amount of routers, all of them connected to the same broadcast network. And those devices will be sending the LSA type 1 to the DR and BDR only. So this is the first step. That's the main function for the DR and BDR. Those devices will have a full adjacency with the DR and BDR only because they will be exchanging those LSAs. And between all the non-designated routers, they are going to be in the two-way state. If you need to understand deeper what exactly means two-way and the full adjacency, you can check the video above. We have gone deeper in this topic in one of the previous videos here in the channel. The LSAs type 2 are generated by the DR only. The BDR is just going to be there, ready. If the DR is going down, then the BDR is going to take that role and it's going to start sending the LSAs type 2 to the rest of the non-designated routers. So once those devices in the broadcast network have information about the designated router, all those messages will be sent to the multicast address 224.0.0.6. And the DR is going to be sending the LSA type 2 to all the routers in the broadcast network and those will be sent to the IP 224.0.0.5. The election process will be performed based on the router priority. This is basically a number that we are going to set at the interface level to provide the router priority for that particular link. The router with the highest value is going to be elected as the DR. The second highest is going to be the BDR. And then all the rest of routers will become non-designated routers. If we have a device that we don't want to be the DR or BDR, we can set a priority value of zero so let's go to the lab and let's learn how to configure a broadcast network how we'll modify the router priority to determine who is going to be the dr so we're going to make an influence in that election process so at this point i only have the configuration of the ip addresses it's using the router id with the format 10.255.255.r where r is the router number we have the network 10.0.0.0 slash 24 in that broadcast domain the ip.1 is going to be in r1.2 is in r2.3 in r3 and dot .4 in r4 those IPs are already there. Additionally, I have the instance already created. So let's check how the configuration in R1 looks at this point. So let's see what do I have in R1. If I go to IP addresses, you can see that I only have the IP address that is facing the switch. So that IP is on Ether1. Then we have the lookback interface. This is going to be the router ID for the device. And also in Ether3 is connected to my office network, basically all for management purposes. If I go to routing OFPF and then instances, I have created the OFPF instance. In one of the previous videos in the channel, we went through this process for how to configure correctly the OFPF instance. You can check the video above if you have missed that information or if you are not sure about this configuration in router OS 7. So I have the OFPF instance, then I have created an area, area zero. In this case, I'm using a single area approach, but you need to use more than one area 
then you can simply create more areas and then map those areas to the interfaces. Also, we have covered that in one of the previous videos here in the channel. We need our one to be the DR. I'm going to increase the router priority on either one. So I need to go to interface templates. You can see that now I have just one template that, that is for the lookback interface and it said that's passive because we are not expecting neighbors out of the lookback interface. But still we need to exchange that information with the rest of the routers in this OFPF domain. So I'm going to add a new entry and I will set the interface iter1 that will be mapped to the area 0. And network type, you can see that we have a bunch of different network types. We'll cover all of them in this video. So I will set broadcast and then I will set the router priority. In router OS 7, the default value is 128. So I will increase that value to 200. And now I will click OK. We saw that the default network type is broadcast. So now I'm going to do exactly the same in R2. So we have R2 routing OFPF and I will add a new interface template. So R2 is connected to, to the switch using the interface Ether1. So I will pick Ether1 broadcast and we need R2 to be the backup designated router. So I will set a value higher than the default, but less than the one on R1. So it's going to be 180. So I'm going to click OK. And then after a few seconds, I will see this adjacency coming up. We have a full adjacency between R1 and R2. So let's continue with R3. Exactly the same process, routing, OFPF, interface templates. And I will add the interface Ether1. And I'll do the same with R4, routing. OFPF. Again, I have the instance ready. I have the area. I will click add a new entry, interfaces, iter1, and I keep all the default values. So now we have a broadcast network configured in those interfaces. If I go here in R4 to neighbors, we can see that we have three neighbors, but the full state is just with the DR and BDR. So that means that now R4 has a full adjacency with R1 and also with R2. There is no adjacency in a full state with R3. This is just a two way. Now yeah. you know how to configure broadcast network type. What's gonna be the behavior in our OSPF topology? I hope this video has been helpful for you and I see you in the next one.